Hello, welcome to the Roy Rogers News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. All right, and on Friday, a new update has arrived here on PokeMO, the Lunar New Year of 2021, February 12th of 2021. Now, the reason why I couldn't cover the update on launch is due to Friday and Saturday being my two religious days, so I couldn't log on PokeMO, but I'm going to cover it here on Sunday, right now. PokeMO update revision number 17,840. Alright, we're going to be right back. Please stay tuned to the Roy Rogers News Channel for further update coverage. Alright, let's go ahead and read the update change log for the Lunar New Year of 2021. February 12th of 2021, and for our Chinese audience that is listening here on the Roy Rogers News Channel, Happy New Year! All right, features, Lunar New Year of 2021. Lunar New Year has returned to PokeMO. A fortune teller has appeared in Celadon City, Slateport City, Heart Home City, and Nesserine City, seeking assistance for the new year. All right, let's go ahead and go to all those locations. So as of right now, we are in Nesserine City in Unova. Let's go ahead and go to the cities mentioned here in the update log for a visual representation. All right, so we are right now in Celadon City. So if you cycle over here, then you should see the fortune teller right here. And then we're going to go over to Slateport right now. All right, so we are here in Slateport City in the Hoenn region. And we see the lady right over here with her wonderful poly toad. And now, let's go ahead and go to Heart Home City in Sinnoh. All right, we are here in Heart Home City, and over here is where you can be able to do the event. And now, let's go ahead and read the rest of the Lunar New Year section of the update log. All right, Abundant Shrine is a two to four player co-op mission Defeat as many enemies as possible, and may good fortune shine upon you. This event will run from February 12th until February 21st. 0, 0, UTC, plus 0. Alright, Lunar New Year 2021 features a leaderboard with an exclusive vanity item for the top 25 teams, the Nyan Hood. All right, and let's go ahead and go to the update log temporarily for our visual representation. There you go. Mighty Boxer, hello. All right. If I see him with this hood, then you know that he's wonderful at PvE events. A little off note there. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the general section of the update log right now. All right. General, vanity items are now color-coded depending on their rarity. So you no longer see a box when you look at each vanity. So now, thanks to the wonderful work of, I assume Darkshade made those icons, so thank you Darkshade for that wonderful artwork. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the gray hat means market items. So those are the common items. You can buy them in, in certain select locations in the game. And then PvP items are black. So you can win them via the PvP mystery box or you can win it via getting 10,000 matchmaking points. And then you have the gift shop items which are in green. Those are the vanities you can purchase in the gift shop. And then you have seasonal items, which are blue. Those items usually come back yearly during selected seasons. As of right now, as of the time of this taping, we have the Winged Heart Backpack available in the gift shop for the Valentine's Day. So you can go ahead and purchase that if that item piques your fancy. Or event items, which are in red, and those items are for events like this, the Lunar New Year, event and lastly the limited items and those items are in gold which means once the item is gone from the gift shop 
you will never be able to purchase it again on PokeMO. And the only way to purchase it is a player-to-player -player economy. Unapplicable. Market prices are now shown for vanity items and players can no longer charge excessive prices for market items on the global trade link. All right. And speaking of the gift shop, we're going to go ahead and read the update log from here because somebody has given us some visual representations here. And I'd like to thank the update writer for these wonderful illustrations. The Golden Dragon Mask is now available for a limited time. And there's a gif of the Dragon Mask venting out its smoke, so if that's a vanity that you would like to have, then it is currently in the gift shop as of the time of this taping. Seasonal firework particles have returned for Lunar New Year 2021. Seasonal shiny charms plus 10% have returned for the Lunar New Year of 2021. The red dragon head, tail, and body vanities have returned for Lunar New Year of 2021. And the winged heart backpack that I mentioned earlier in this broadcast has returned for Valentine's Day of 2021. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the bug fixes. Bug fixes. Fix an issue where region aware music tracks, e.g. legendary battles would not play back correctly in some situations. Fix an issue where metronome item does not scale in its damage upwards quickly enough. Fix an issue where shiny running and damage prompts would not display in safari battles. Android, fix an issue where when swapping from a PC to a party, you cannot return to the PC UI. Chrome OS, fix an issue where when using the Linux beta compatibility layer, players could not select ROM files using the UI. Chrome OS remains an unsupported platform with limited technical assistance. Fix an issue where bag subcategories would not always render the correct name. Trick may no longer be used by holders of mail items. Fix an issue where ally switch would not function correctly in co-op PVE. Fix an issue where if reconnecting while your active team was taunted and tormented, a deadlock could occur where players were unable to select moves. Fix an issue with battle data processing, which prevented tiering statistics being updated past February 1st. Roar, Dragon Tail, and Circle Throw are now more explicit as to why wild battles ended. Android, fixed link HUD UIs not showing. All right, and now let's go ahead and go to the very important update notes. In fact, I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to the update log, even though there's no illustrations here, because this is quite important and I would like to link the Java 11 updater in the description below, so feel free to update your Java systems for desktops if you don't have it updated yet. All right, PokeMO's compatibility mode software renderer has been depreciated and will be removed in a future update. Affected users are notified that compatibility mode is enabled. Performance will be degraded on every game start. PokeMO's desktop client now requires Java 11. Depending on your installation method, you may be required to manually update your system to continue play. Expected compatibility is as follows. No action is required for these system configurations. Windows installer x86 and x64, Android, Linux, most modern distributions including Ubuntu, 18 0.04 plus and Debian stable. Mac OS users using the previously released optimal Mac OS 
launcher update. Action may be required for these system configurations. Windows Portable. Yep. Recommended action, install the game client via the Windows installer instead. Other action, install open JDK 11 for Azul. Old Linux distributions, recommended action, install open JDK 11 from your package manager and update the default Java runtime environment for the system. Mac OS users with the older launcher. Required action, update the Mac OS launcher as soon as it prompts for an upgrade. This launcher upgrade increases the minimum Mac OS version from 10.9.5 to 10.13.6. All right. And now, let's go ahead and read the changelog for February 14th of 2021. Changelog for February 14th of 2021, bug fixes. Fixed several server crashes, fixed an incorrect move description for QuickGuard. QuickGuard does not fail on subsequent uses, though it does affect protect and endure moves. Fixed link broadcasting in invalid character in some situations. Fixed players being able to swap out of Devour, fix an exploit which could allow players to skip the Nyon. In the Lunar New Year co-op event, the last enemy defeated for each player will no longer grow immediately upon the next wave spawn. Players inside the Lunar New Year co-op event can no longer sign up for PvP. Fixed GTL price caps for items which were available as coin mart items. So tuxedos and, and our uniforms are a prime example of this particular update being fixed. So now there are price caps to those vanity items. All right, added soft boiled and slacked off field effects for the Lunar New Year co-op event. Out of battle skill usage trade requests now tick the AFK timer for activity. Fix an issue where when reconnecting during a co-op event battle, players could only struggle. GTL market item listing price limits are now approximately 5% profit after fees instead of before fees. Fixed add-on preview image positioning. Fix an issue where hotbar overrides would not always reset if a player forfeited in the Lunar New Year co-op event ending the instance. Fix an issue where dig when used in the Lunar New Year co-op event could cause players to get stuck. Fix an issue where OOB moves could cause the client to lock up if used in some cases. All right, and thank you so much for watching. This is the Roy Rogers News Channel. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel, like the content that you see here. And this is the Roy Rogers News Channel signing off. Fast, accurate, unbiased, Roy Rogers News.